What is up, you guys? In this episode, we are talking about is the coaching industry full of BS? We're diving into some of the biggest pitfalls, traps, and just red flags across the board. There are some weird things that are happening these days in the online space and in the coaching industry. And I'm gonna be that person that's kind of a little bit of a whistleblower, but I'm okay with that. And hopefully I can frame this in a way that empowers you to be somebody who is full of integrity, who really owns what they do with a lot of confidence. My name is Jen Casey. I am a business strategy coach and I work with online entrepreneurs in the health and wellness field who want to go from social media to sales. The coaching industry is something that has developed very quickly over the last however many years, like Tony Robbins is kind of the father of the coaching industry and he started in NLP. He, he started with a bunch of therapists and he was like, oh, I don't, I don't need a degree or certification, but here's the deal. He had tangible, real results and he had taken the time to master his craft. Now, something that I see within the coaching industry rather often is that there are a lot of people owning someone else's message instead of owning their own. And I've had a lot of students and clients and people who have reached out to me who will use Tony Robbins as an example to defend their point. I'm just like, listen, it's Tony Robbins. Let's not even go down that rabbit hole. But here's the thing. There's people who come forward in the coaching industry and they have a point of view. They have expertise, they have experience. And there's some people that they're like, hey, Jen, I'm green, I, I don't have any experience yet. What am I supposed to do? Listen, I am all 110% about you starting out as a research expert and really taking the time to read dozens upon dozens of books, do some training courses, and then start getting into some pro bono coaching to really develop and master your abilities as a coach. Master your craft, right? It's not something that you do overnight. It's not like you get a certification and suddenly, you know, you're you're all figured out. No, it's something that you you take time to develop. But one thing that I see, like I said, is a lot of people not owning their own message but owning someone else's. And this happens a lot. You'll see this inside Facebook groups, unfortunately, where there's a lot of copying and pasting. There's a lot of people taking someone else's ideas and changing a few words and putting their own names on it. And it's very frustrating to see when somebody steps forward and says, oh, I'm a life coach, when they only read one personal development book. And now they're just kind of like, oh, I know about goal setting, right? And I'm not saying this to put anyone down. I started myself with reading one personal development book. Like we all start somewhere. But I think it's important to recognize in yourself whether or not you're leading in your business with true integrity. Are you fully able to help people? Because if not, if you're not in a place where you're emotionally figured out with your baggage or you've developed a system that you know works, you should not be charging a premium. I'm sorry, I love you, I love you and I want you to make money and I know you are so deserving of that money, but I truly believe that you shouldn't be charging a premium yet. Now this is a little bit different if you're somebody that's maybe read dozens of, you know, maybe you're a sales expert, right? And you want to be a sales expert. You've read dozens of sales books. You've taken courses. You've learned techniques from the top people in the industry. You've assimilated them like they're in your DNA. Like you can spit those off like it's nobody's business. You've used them on sales calls or with partners and, and just practicing and you've seen tangible results with it. Now, if you want to step forward and take techniques that you have not originated and maybe use them as teaching tools, you can certainly do that, but you've got to give credit where credit's due. And if you're taking somebody's full program and duplicating it and putting your name on it, no, that doesn't count. That absolutely does not count. You've got to take what you're learning, change it, find your own results and own techniques, tweak it, make it something that's you, and then you can create your own products and programs and things that you sell. Now, of course, this is gonna vary depending on the strategy or the life coaching or the whatever that you're doing. If you're really into doing NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, well, there's a set set of um, tools that you use. There are certain questions, right? But maybe you've got your own take on how to do one area of it. Well, then that's certainly something that you can package and sell. But I really wanna encourage you guys to make sure that it's yours. And I know that a lot of people, when they first step into the online world, they see 
a lot of other people doing stuff that's similar to them. They have comparisonitis. They are freaking out because they don't know how to create their own voice because they're just constantly listening to other people. But I'm telling you, you've got to own your message and not someone else's. Okay, so number two, right? Newbie coaches. I see kind of often where, in a, in a similar vein, where people want to turn around and claim an expertise that they're not fully ready to step into. And then they're wondering why people are not banging down their door and they're not buying their products and programs. And it's partly because you haven't established rapport with your audience yet, or you haven't even built an audience yet. But a lot of times it could just be that you aren't ready to claim that expertise. And you know, I'll see this a lot, you know, even with health coaches where you know, maybe it's a woman who's a new health coach, maybe she was a network marketer, maybe she's never done a certification program, and she maybe has a thyroid condition. And she says, well, I really feel passionate about helping people heal their thyroid. And I'm like, cool, like, that's a great area, that's a great niche, it's super needed, there's a lot of cool things you can do within that. But here's the problem. Are you actually qualified? Are you qualified and knowledgeable enough and ready to walk someone through that process? If you haven't healed your thyroid yet, you know, there's, there, this becomes kind of like the, the gray area. It's like, if you haven't healed your thyroid yet, are you qualified to help somebody else do that? Kind of yes, kind of no. You can certainly give somebody those first couple of steps because there's things that you've already figured out. Maybe you've been at this for a year and a half of trying to figure out how to heal your thyroid. Well, maybe there's somebody who just found out the other day that they have a condition. Well, you can certainly direct them to some basic articles, books, doctors. So you do have some expertise, not necessarily in the healing of your thyroid, but you have expertise in what not to do, or at least you've already crossed off some of the things. So you're saving them time. And that's something that you can package and sell for sure. But you know, this whole idea of, um, you know, if you're, if you're not sure if your stuff works, maybe you you're new to the thyroid world and you're like, well, I haven't really fully healed myself. That's definitely number one. You are your first client. You are a walking billboard for your business, your income, your body, your emotional stability, like whatever your niche is, you should be the walking billboard for that. You should be able to say that you've successfully accomplished it yourself before you start teaching it to other people. And then if you're somebody who maybe doesn't have a ton of experience coaching and, and doing things of that sort, you know, if you're green, start with some pro bono coaching get that hands-on experience without the pressure of somebody paying you without that pressure, without that, like, Oh gosh, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know I have to deliver and get in some training programs so that you can really hone your skills. And you know, if you want to coach around something like thyroid and maybe you haven't successfully healed it yet, you don't have to necessarily say that, you don't, you don't have to claim that. And I don't think you should, but you can call yourself like the thyroid warrior and lead with that in your branding, but don't necessarily coach around that fully until you have things that you can teach people. Like you need to have a system. You need to have a step-by-step, -step, something that you can hand somebody. That's really what being a helpful teacher is about. Like what's your system? How are you going to get them from point A to point B? What is the problem that you're solving? How are you getting them to that solution? So don't get in over your head, teach things that you already have mastered, things that you already know how to do. And I know that you have so much expertise under your belt already. That's not going to be an issue for you at all, at all. This, this topic gets me very fired up. The other piece I want to chat about kind of like the BS and the coaching industry, like what's real, what's not is I want to just say like, beware of exaggerated, false or misleading claims. And some people might get mad that I'm saying this, but here's the real deal because I get very irritated, like viscerally angry when I see stuff like this, perhaps because I just have a really strong moral compass or I just have a ton of integrity in what I do. And I think there's enough highlight reel on social media. We all post a little bit of highlight reel, but when you're doing it in marketing, I understand like it's going to get you some more sales, but like to me that just feels so gross and icky. It just does not sit well with me. So some things that I've seen just even recently that did not sit well with me. Um, and these are some examples as well. You know, a Facebook ad talking about, Oh, I have this six figure launch who wants to make six figures now. That's fine. Like there's certainly people who are making a six figure launch. I'm not saying that person's being false about the fact that that's what they made in sales in sales, but 
six figures in sales is different than six figures in profit. Okay, six figures in sales is I open my cart and the X amount of people bought and we said bottom line after we close the cart, we made six figures. Now, for some people, the way that they run their businesses, they might have a team in place, they might be running a ton of Facebook ads, they might be paying for their email marketing system, their landing page system, their website, their designer. So they've got all of these expenses. And listen, running a business costs money, so this is not to say anything bad about anyone, but I just want the newbies or the people who maybe haven't thought about it this way to really understand that a six-figure launch is usually talking about the sales that that person made, which is fine, but it's not the take home. It's not what they have in their bank account. It's not their necessarily their profit from that launch. Okay, so that's one thing that I see a lot and, and a lot of people get very discouraged because they're like, oh my God, like I only have, you know, I've made $10,000 from, from my business and how am I ever gonna scale up to, to make six figures? And it's like, you're not necessarily making six figures. It's a six figure in, sales, right? So there's a little bit of a difference. And realize though, those people that are doing six figures in sales, they're probably investing in their business. So if you're somebody who's been waiting to invest in your business, waiting to make money, like you're like, oh, when I make money, then I'll invest. Like that's, that's backwards. That's super backwards. Because it's the people who are having the six figure launch, they invested 50,000 and then they, $100,000 in sales, $50,000 profit, okay? You know, just, just the other day, I saw this picture on social media and it was from a network marketing company and no shade on network marketing companies. Not all are, are like this. And this was just one particular person, right? This is not, not putting a blanket statement out there. Um, but it was like, oh, you got, this person got a car bonus. Woohoo, congratulations, so-and-so. It was a picture of the, the individuals on their team and then a picture of a car. And it said car bonus. And I'm like, oh my God, did this person earn a car because some network marketing companies are real cool and they actually do give their distributors cars. So I'm like, wow, this person earned a car. That's amazing. So then all of these people were commenting underneath like, oh my God, you got a car. That's amazing. And it was like, oh no, I made a quarterly bonus of $500 and it's going to go towards my car payment. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold the phone, time out. That's super different. And the picture and the text, very misleading very, very misleading. You don't say, oh, car bonus with a picture of a car and the person's face. And then every, like, I wasn't the only person. There's about six other people that were like, oh my God, congratulations, you won a car. Like you earned a car. No, no, no. Like, no, not, not cool. Not cool to do that because that's super out of integrity. And guess what? You may trick somebody into thinking that they're gonna earn a car and that's why they're gonna sign up for your team. But at the end of the day, they're gonna, they're gonna realize, they're gonna figure it out. Anybody who actually takes that bait they're going to realize that that wasn't the case and then probably think that you're not in your truth. You're not being authentic. You're not being in integrity. There's, there's different things in, in every business. There's, there's pros and cons. Um, you know, also let's talk about like, you know, if somebody has, um, if someone's like has a podcast, right? This is something that I've been seeing a lot now that I'm kind of in the podcasting world. Um, you know, if somebody says like, oh, I have a hundred thousand downloads on a podcast, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, they have 100,000 listeners. And it's like 100,000 downloads are not the same thing as 100,000 listeners. And I'm coaching a lot of people right now on developing their own podcast. And they're like, oh God, that feels so far away. And I'm like, why does that feel so far away? They're like, well, 100,000 people, like where am I gonna find 100,000 people? I'm like, no, 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 no. Here's how this goes. 100,000 downloads on a podcast. Let's say you have 50 episodes, 50 episodes up. That's on average 2,000 downloads per episode. Now, of course, if you're first launching, you're probably not gonna have numbers like that, so it's gonna grow. But if you have 100,000 downloads on a podcast, 50 episodes, and on average 2,000 downloads per episode, that could mean that, you're only, that, that you have maybe 2,000 to 5,000 individual listeners. Not 100,000 listeners, probably around five, 6,000 listeners, which is still, Oh my gosh, that's amazing, that's amazing. But it's, it's not quite the same as 100,000, right? A, a little different. Now, if you're somebody who has a really successful podcast and you're getting a, a million downloads per episode or 100,000 downloads per episode, okay, yes, in that case, if it's on an individual episode, you had 100,000 
or a million or whatever it is, unique listeners at that particular time. So that's really the only, you can't measure subscriber numbers on a podcast. There's just no way to do it. So that's really the only way to determine kind of how many people are listening based on the average number of listeners or listens rather, listens per episode, the number of downloads. Yeah, there's so many people starting a podcast. I think that's a beautiful thing to do to really grow your brand and to just give, give away free content, free value. And, and I wanna say, you know, I'm not trying to diminish anybody's hard work because like all of these numbers are incredible. They're incredible. But I want the new people who are on the fence about taking steps forward, who are just trying to get their feet wet, who are really excited about up leveling, I want you to realize that you're not that far away from achieving exactly what the people who you admire, you're not that far away from achieving what they've done. You're really not. It's just that the way that they are framing it might make it seem like it's a little bit more grandiose than it actually is. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you feel like you have something to say and you've got an audience, I would definitely do a search on, uh, on iTunes and see if there's anything in that niche yet. And if not, that might be a beautiful opportunity for you to really step in and, and create that podcast. Like just the other day, my boyfriend's an actor and he was like, you know, I really want to find a podcast that talks about flow state and really getting into your creativity. And we couldn't find one. We couldn't find one. We found a couple of cool episodes that discussed that and some cool books that kind of went into that. But there was no podcast that focused completely on on diving into that. So listen, there's people looking for a lot of different things. And if you've got a voice and you feel like you really want to talk about something specific, absolutely go all in and, and do it. Like there's no, there's no reason not to. It's, it's really not that hard to set up a podcast and get it approved, honestly. It's, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, and the last thing that I really wanted to just quickly touch on is that in this business world or in this coaching world or in the online space, there's a lot of people who claim that they have the strategy, like this is the new thing, I have the answer. No, like no, there's no one strategy to achieve success that's just ridiculous, like it's just craziness. There's no one right strategy. Sure, there are best practices, there are tons of amazing proven strategies that you can certainly plug into to get to your desired end result, but there's no one be all end all. And if you're working with someone who thinks that their strategy is the only way, uh, you might wanna step away from that person, that company, and just start to, to gather some information from some other people and other quote unquote experts or, or gurus in the space. You don't build a business overnight, right? There's, there's, no, there's no way that you're building a business overnight. And I remember I did this discovery call before uh, she enrolled in the Wellpreneur Business Academy, and she had done a, a program that was around branding your business. And she said that the girl who was coaching in this program told her that she really like, mm, you really don't need to join another program because I've taught you everything you need to know. <laughs> and I, I was on the phone with this girl and I said, oh, she mentioned that, huh? That's, that's an interesting thing to say. I'm gonna be really honest with you. And I asked her a couple questions and I said, listen, I'm gonna be really honest with you. If any coach tells you that they're gonna help to, that they're gonna give you everything that you need to know about growing a business in a matter of four weeks, you probably shouldn't listen to them because that's ridiculous. Like, no, there's so many things that go into building a successful business and scaling it that of course no one's gonna be able to teach you that in a matter of four weeks. And she was like, oh yeah, you're right. That kind of, that's true, that makes sense. I was like, yeah, kind of sorry to burst this person's bubble, but if anybody's putting themselves quite on that pedestal, they need to check themselves before they wreck themselves. But all in all, like these are the things that people are hearing. And if you're a newbie health coach, you know, you, you just, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are selling information products, selling their knowledge, selling their coaching, who are not super qualified to do that. And listen, if you want to, like I said before, if you want to be a health coach and you really want to talk about thyroid, then go in and get the schooling. You don't have to step into that before you're ready. If you want to be a business coach, but you've never, uh, you know, built a six figure business, you don't have to be a sales coach. You don't have to talk about sales right away. Find something that you are really good at. Maybe you're incredible at creating graphics and doing visual branding. Well, don't just slap that you're a visual branding coach. Go do some courses. Go work with somebody who's in that area, who's like the be all end all expert. 
visual branding coach in the industry, learn from that person and then step forward and begin your business journey as a business coach through, through that lens with that specific problem that you're solving. So guys, I'm not saying that you, know, you can't step forward and you can't own the shit out of what you're doing, but just do it from a place of integrity, seriously, because there's, there's so much noise, there's so much BS in the industry, and it really frustrates me, and I'm sure it frustrates you as well to not know what's real, because not all that glitters is gold, and we need to be real deal. Like If we wanna heal the industry, if we wanna help people get real results, it really starts with each and every one of us stepping forward and doing things, not because it's got you know, a number sign, not because you're gonna make a quick sale, but because you know it's the right thing to do for someone. And listen, this is, this is not about specifically network marketing or specifically health coaches or specifically business coaches or specifically life coaches. Like this is for everyone across the board, for everyone. So that is what I wanna leave you with for today. And if you are not already inside the Facebook group, come and hang out. Tons of free video resources and content around building a business from the ground up. So come on over there and come hang out. And I will see you guys soon.